Yeah, Think Tech Talks. Think Tech Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel here on a given Tuesday morning. And we're talking about spikes in cyber attacks with two guys who can see and know what's going on. Maybe even they can deal with it. Uh, Achilles Suresh from Stylanda. Uh, and we have a special guest today, uh, Gerhard Rickert. And he's a, uh, I'll, let you def I'll let you define yourself. What, what, what are you doing here? And how did you get into our studio? Uh, Gerhard. <laughs> well, I'm the uh, CEO of Pacific Global Security Group, uh, former CISO of Dark Matter, and uh, <laughs> currently in Hawaii, supporting our war fighters and government and cybersecurity consulting, and uh, work together here with Attila. Okay, so Attila, you know, what's going on here? We have a spike in cyber attacks, and, and we are re referring to Hawaii. This is a spike in cyber attacks in Hawaii. Is it beyond Hawaii? What, what, how did this come to your attention? Well, that's, that's the main thing here, Jay. So, and this is why everyone who's, who's listening should pay attention is that if they are doing business with the government in any way, shape or form, either as a prime or a subcontractor, know that you've been targeted over the past few weeks by a highly sophisticated spear phishing attempt. Uh, now, a, a spear phishing, what that means is that's an email that looks very believable. Uh, now, uh, Jay, I'm sure has disseminated the information, but if you want to, you can go to uh, our blog or on the uh, Think Tech blog, and you'll see the uh, what it looks like. And it's a very convincing email that we've been seeing from a, a number of government contractors. Uh, they've been forwarding us these emails, and uh, you know, uh, we we're just trying to get the word out to be careful. Uh, those emails direct you to a web page where they are harvesting credentials. What that means is usernames and passwords to your email accounts, to your SharePoint. Uh, to anything that could be uh, relevant to your business. And unfortunately, if you are reusing those passwords anywhere, that means that if they get access to one, they have access to more. And uh, the reason this is important right now is that government contractors often have proprietary information. And a highly targeted uh, attack like this means that they're trying to probably get into government resources. And uh, not only could that uh, be detrimental to our uh, you know, to our economy here and to our, uh, you know, to our government, but it can be detrimental to your company because now if it's linked to you that you had some poor cyber hygiene and accidentally gave your credentials over, that means that that government contract that you have, or, or uh, if you're up for renewal, uh, you may not get it because uh, that means that you've been compromised. So is it nation? Is it nationwide? Uh, until <laughs> is it nationwide? Or just Hawaii? Mind you, Hawaii has a lot of government contracts. And, well, exactly. And, but, <laughs> we have the highest density in all of the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is why Gerhard is so important here, because he has the other perspective, which is what does it look like from the other side? Who are these guys that are trying to get into our economy and destroy it? And uh, how can we protect ourselves? And, uh, you know, part of what he does on his side, which is why he's so vital to the community here, is uh, to protect our, uh, our economy. And he, he knows who these guys are on the other side. So I wanted to have him, uh, you know, speak to us on that. Yeah, Garrett, thanks for joining the show. How much of what Attila said is true? Oh, 100%, 100%. Um, <laughs> it is nationwide. Hawaii is having a spike right now due to all the government uh, spending within Hawaii to bolster the, um, to bolster the presence within the Pacific against, say, China or whatnot, any type of adversaries that may be interested in, in starting uh, issues here. So these APTs, these advanced persistent threats, these nation states are constantly probing, uh, primarily China, uh, a lot of Russia, but um, other places as well. Why a spike now? Well, it's due to all the spending that's starting, right? Everybody knows that they're going to dump lots and lots of money. It's, it's an obscene amount of money that's coming into the Hawaiian Islands to fortify the Hawaiian Islands as we're the first line of defense. Yeah, he, he is correct. Uh, it was, we asked for $4 billion, We got $7 billion here. Mm. So $7 billion over the You know, that never year. happens to me. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, that uh, guard is absolutely correct. That is going to uh, you know, make us a target. And you're not looking at, you're not, you're not, they're not going after, say, the military directly, right? The military by law has to use these small companies and these small companies provide these services, you know, Joe Bag of Donuts shop of 
widgets and gidgets and, and the government needs to use these by SBA rules and regulations, well, guess what? They're not so secure. You know, they reuse passwords. They probably don't have certain type of security uh, technology in place and they're easy targets. So whatever they have, whatever information they have on their government contract or what they're doing at work, you know, this could be uh, stolen and used against them. And then eventually the critical infrastructure will be the next attack, right? The critical infrastructure here in Hawaii is probably the most sought after what, what does that mean? What does that mean, Karen? What is critical infrastructure? Electricity, water, um, you know, everything. Why go, why go after the base itself, the military itself, when you can take down the infrastructure around it first, right? Cause a lot of problems, cause a lot of havoc, cause chaos within the islands. Um, lots of money needs to be spent to fix it up. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is something that we've been preaching about day in and day out. So what's the theory? If I knock off, uh, say, uh, the power grid or water um, or, or the Internet in general mm -hmm. uh, in, in Hawaii, that is going to take everybody down, including these defense contractors and subcontractors. So if I knock off the platform, then everybody in the platform, including them, uh, are affected. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you know, the bases, obviously, they're built for um, redundancy, but the rest of the islands, it's a minimum of a six hour flight anywhere if you want to go somewhere. Right. So just the chaos that would would be created, the havoc that would be created within the islands from a major you know, cyber attack on any of the major facilities. Would, so it's would be not it's not just um, the defense facilities, defense contractors and subcontractors. It's separate. all of us. Because if they go for the platform, they're affecting everyone in the state, every man, woman, and child in the state. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and to and to you know have a little bit of evidence for current events. Uh, remember how just a, what was it about a month ago? It was all over the local news about how uh, a fiber circuit was almost taken down. One of our primary interconnects between here and the mainland. Yep. Almost was taken down, and uh, it was a coordinated effort, uh, you know, multinational effort to stop it from happening. I mean, imagine if our communications infrastructure was, uh, was interrupted, but it all comes from these small, seemingly insignificant, you know, email taps or, you know, little pro well, let's, let's go to that, Attila. You know, so you, you describe what, what you call it, spear phishing. Um, and it's relatively in, unsophisticated. It's, it's relatively clumsy. And, you know, well, I mean, a, 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 a well-trained, uh, you know, person, is going to be able to spot what you described on the screen. So why why are these nation states doing this kind of attack when they could do something much more sophisticated and get right to the heart of it without relying on phishing? Sophisticate sophistication takes time and effort. You know, spear phishing, spear phishing you're you're phishing the masses, right? And are, are these people intelligent enough to understand what type of phishing campaign is going on? For the most part, no, it doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. It's just, this is a new wave of issues that are hitting the Hawaiian islands. And it's time for the Hawaiian islands to, to really understand that, hey, cybersecurity, cyber threats here are real. It's, it's the real thing. It's not just in the movies. It's not just in the mainland. It's not just, you know, overseas. It's right here in our backyard. You know, it's a uh, mm -hmm. big problem we have is China is one of the main culprits here, but we have a very big Chinese, um, you know, demographic here in Hawaii. And people think, oh, well, it won't happen to us because we have a lot of Chinese here. No, that's not true. You know, it's, uh, it's happening as we speak. And the training that has to go into, you know, getting these small businesses and these big businesses to understand that those emails look real those emails will get you unless you have a trained eye to identify it. And it's not hard. You know, if you kind of get the hang of it, if you kind of understand what you're looking at, you can identify a phishing attempt pretty quick. The, the average person can identify a phishing attack pretty quick with the proper training, 10 minutes of training and vigilance, right? Understanding it, learning it, and then all of a sudden not using it doesn't work. So, you know, once you understand what to look for, continuously do that. You know, we're in, it's a different world now. And uh, I don't, I don't want to paint a doomsday picture, but 
Well, will, you, will you be okay if I ask you what essentially to summarize what that training is? Because if you if you talk in public about what that training is, you're really tipping the other side off, the attackers off, who who may be watching or who watch later, um, and and they say, ah, you know, Gerhard is talking about you know the training and what the people are looking for. We'll bypass that. We'll bypass this training. How much can you talk about this training in public? Okay. It's it's public training. That's that's not anything. There's no secret sauce behind it, right? It's under you know. It's looking at things like the email address, making sure that when you hover over it, it's actually the right email address. These tend to come from different countries that English is not the first language. So read carefully. Read what's going on. Look for the mistakes in the spelling. Sure, they may have a properly drafted email, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, there's some key points that that will, uh, will, will tip you off to some type of attack. And then it's the integrated technologies that companies bring into their, to help fight the battle, right? So the human aspect is one aspect, but there's other aspects, there's other technical aspects that can really help in the fight against this. And keep in mind, this is just one avenue of attack. Hmm. Well, can you talk about some others? Talk about whatever you want. Whatever you want. <laughs> How much time do you have, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, why can't I, you know, prevent, um, you know, this kind of email from coming to my, to my company, my crew, my team, and the people who might be uh, subject, um, you know, to being fooled? Uh, well, isn't there technology that would block it somehow? Yeah, there, there is technology, but um, for me, it's the basics and configuration management is, to me, one of the biggest problems we have when you have a misconfigured server or technology or security device that can do the job but is not configured properly um you know that's half the battle though what what humans you know really need to do is not rely 100 percent on technology itself uh, i think it was in star trek where uh, the borg said that technology or computers is an imperfect machine built by imperfect beings right so you can't uh you can't rely on computers to protect you 100 percent of the time you heard it here on Think Tech Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, right. <laughs> so training, you know, proper security training, you know, quarterly, at least quarterly with your company to understand what the current trends are. Bring in a VCSO, you know, virtual CISO or whatnot, and have them do the training. Have them get your company up to speed on what's going on. How much, how much of the problem is that these companies don't take it seriously? And they don't do that quarterly training, and and they don't, uh, you know, motivate their employees to be careful. Uh, they uh, they they sort of let let it go at default, which is uh, it's never going to bother me. Uh, I'm smarter than that. Um, how do they? How do you or the government, for that matter, get people and companies excited enough to actually take steps here? Well, un unfortunately. Um as we've seen in the past, especially in Hawaii, um, it takes a compelling event to happen. It's after the fact that usually people get nervous, they get scared and boom, they get hit. And uh, at that point, you know, the pe people are brought in, the PACSEX, uh, the Mandiants and whatnot are brought in and, you know, we have to do damage control, but. Uh, <laughs> well, what, is, what is that, Gerhard? What is damage control? So you get a call. And it's um, you know some kind of and you I know you know we we talked about this before until you get a call and somebody is in a cold panic and something is going really wrong uh, and they say come and help me well a you know what what happened uh, to make them call you and and b what can you do you do uh, to do the damage control because sometimes this is also quotable sometimes it's too late isn't it usually after the fact it, it is pretty tough but what i tell most people um i've i've watched in my previous life i've watched seasoned phd cybersecurity people freeze up in the middle of an incident so my first piece of advice if this happens is stop take a breath understand what's going on and then move forward, um, you know, get in touch with your cybersecurity professionals, get in touch with PACSEC or Silanda or whatnot. Both of us will probably respond at the same time. Um, 
<laughs> then at that point, you know, we'll figure out what the damage is. But our goal is to, you know, promote cybersecurity awareness and learning so that you can get ahead of the cue ball so that, you know, you understand and you start to see the attack happening. Well, what there could the damage be? Um, you know, I have a little company. Let's take the, the company we began with. Uh, it does uh, defense contracting for the government or some prime. Um, and um, and they are they are very concerned with aberrations that are happening on their system. They're not sure, but they're worried because they've read about this and they know about the surge, the spike, if you will. Um, and so what kind of damage could we have? Why don't you just turn the damn thing off and walk away and have a margarita? That would that would be nice, you know, if if the world worked like that nowadays. But uh, unfortunately, we are too well connected. Let's see how quick, uh, how long somebody can turn their cell phone off, and and see uh, how long they can go out without that, right? So, um, you know, if you wanted to get into the the statistics of it, a mentor of mine from uh, Central Pacific Bank, he taught me a site called Ponymon, and he taught me all about statistics. And you get in there and you look at the statistics of how much a compromise costs most companies, and you're looking at between three to four hundred thousand dollars an incident. So, what does that mean for the small business here? If you're compromised, and all of a sudden you're you're hammered with three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of damages, well, guess what? You're out of business. And uh, slowly but surely, domino effects happen, and and people just go out of business. Well, what, 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 what's the damage? In other words, uh, am I losing data? Is uh, classified or, or is, you know, uh, proprietary data being destroyed? What is happening? You, you could lose data. You know, data could get compromised. It could get encrypted. It could get, you know, what malware could, could infest. Like ran ransomware you talked about. Ransomware, um, reputational damage. But there's an insurance, right? Yeah, yeah. Here we go with insurance. Ah, uh, there we go. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So the insurance, well, insurance is never going to cover this kind of thing. Yeah, don't, don't quote me, but the insurance company has come out and said, if it's a nation state attack that they're not going to pay out, that's why you see a lot of companies dropping their cybersecurity uh, insurance because major companies are getting hit by nation states. They're getting hit by APT. And those, those nation states and those advanced persistent threats have the time, the money, you know, to sit there and wait for you to mess up. And then they'll take advantage of that and you're done. So what's, so in it, cyber... what's in it for them? Some kind of geopolitical gain some kind of is political is the government be, there paying them to do this yeah it could be geopolitical it could be the safety of our our people it could be the safety of our war fighters um you know and that that hits home for me right that's a very personal part of of, of as a veteran you know i i want to make sure my war fighters are are safe and and you know so that's a very uh Deering point in my heart, um, but let, let me go to the other side of this whole question. Um, we have a little time to discuss this, but I'm so curious. Okay, we know. Uh, I know China is doing this, and they're probably very, very good at it. Um, but Russia's doing it too, and uh, we read about Russia. Matter of fact, there was a very interesting suit uh, filed this morning in in uh, District of Columbia by some lawyer against Mark Zuckerberg. Remember him? Uh, for, for his shenanigans with uh, Cambridge Analytica, hold, trying to hold him personally responsible for the damage uh, that was suffered by the misinformation and disinformation that Cambridge Analytica spread around. Anyway, that all reminds me of the ERA in an nondescript building in downtown Moscow. You wouldn't you wouldn't tell it from any of the buildings here. You know why nondescript? Okay, and somewhere in this building, probably not a lot of floor space. Is a bunch of guys whose job it is to do attacks like this. And, you know, if you can do it in a nondescript building in Moscow, you can do one in, in Tehran, in, in Pyongyang, um, you know, name it. Um, and so I, well, I'd like you to take me there. Take me to the ERA type of nondescript building where you have a bunch of smart guys with, you know, advanced degrees from that country who know well enough what they want to do how do they do it? They're, they're, they're working presumably in teams. They have trainers. Um, they have a lot of uh, resources available. They probably start at like the phone book or something really, you know, basic like that. Um, and then they wind up with a list of people 
to send phishing attacks to. I mean, tell me how it works. How do they get in on this? How do they become such a threat to us? Well, there's, um, so we've identified the buildings and stuff in certain countries of where those particular groups sit. And at any point in time, there's about 100,000 people that are actively targeting from one particular building um, at any time. So the, you know, it's, it's, and let's, let's get the degree out of the way, right? It's not, you know, highly educated degrees and stuff. There's some of that, but there are people that are natural geniuses at this and, um, and they, you know, they do a lot of damage, but if you look at the APT and how they're doing it, there's many different ways. One of the, one of the biggest ways of doing it is just basically automating it, spamming it, having it, having it shoot across the internet and, you know, looking for any kink in the armor. And once it hits it, then they'll get eyes on glass to see what that particular vulnerability was. And if they'll do some research on it and if it's worth moving any further, they will, or they'll put it in their back pocket. Um, if you're targeted, then obviously they have a dossier on you and, and you, you know, spy games is not anything that's, you know, fake. It, it happens. There are spies in Hawaii. There are spies all over the world. Um, you can read multiple books on this. You can listen to multiple YouTube videos on this. Well, just watch, just watch um, um, Netflix. There's a million movies all about all these spies. And, and some of that has to be true. Well, yeah. And, and you, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things that happen in America lately, you know, with certain demographics of spies and whatnot that we've heard. But here in Hawaii, we, you know, there's a, there's a dedicated amount that are here that are currently tracked. And, and I think that goes all over, all over America as well. Gerhard, do you, and, and uh, Tilla, do you guys think that they're tracking you? Worse yet, do you think they're tracking me? <laughs> um, I, I think my, my agent that probably tracks me is, is probably sick of, of my internet browsing style. <laughs> I, I give them a fun time all the time. So, um, <laughs> well, don't you think they want to know how you operate? Don't you want to? Don't you think they want to know how you train, how you I, uh, help your clientele? I so I primarily service the U.S. government, and I'm you know I bleed red, white, and blue. I love my country. Um, you know, as, and as a patriot, I, I I would hope that my government trusts me enough to you know not. And if they do, that's fine. I have nothing to hide, right? Everything I do is above board. Um, so I, I don't know how you feel about that, but <laughs> well, until I agree with him immediately. Well, here, here's the thing: in order for us to <laughs> do what we do, we need to have uh, certain standards in place. Uh, we need to pass certain requirements. We need to be. Uh, we need to follow the same rules that we ask our clients to follow, which is making sure we have a security awareness training program that we have a least privilege and uh, proper security measures in effect. That we're not running around with uh, equipment that could potentially be, uh, you know, stolen or lost, and then uh, provide access to our customers' networks. These are the reasons that companies uh, like ours exist. Is because we have to first, you know, eat that sausage uh, ourselves, and then, uh, or, or should I say, well, the other, the other thing is that you know we got to we got to eat the own do our own dog food. Is yeah. that is that how it works? Yeah. So you have to eat the sausage. You have to do your, you have to do it yourself first. Uh, you know, it's just like when you go to the gym, do you look for the fat guy to, to be your fitness trainer or are you looking for that real fit, you know, muscular guy to show you how to do uh, the exercises correctly? So this, this explains why I can never get a job at a gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at, at least uh, you're among friends here. You know, us little overweight, pudgy uh, <laughs> IT guys yeah. really know. What it's we're it's doing. part of the profession, isn't it? Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, and another thing is, is yet yeah, it. You have to have, if, if, if you want to catch the bad guys, you have to think like a bad guy as well. Um, you know, and, and well, you have to have one ear in the dark as well as the light. Well, I wanted to ask you about that, Gerhard. So, you know, I mean, the, the essential message that most people get is to don't worry. The government is here to help. Don't worry. The government has, you know, these standards and requirements and everybody who touches computers, has to, you know, meet them and so forth. Um, and and behind part of that is we know who's doing this. We, we can, you know, it's like the, those indictments, you know, out of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They got the names 
the names of the individuals who conducted the war crimes. That's impressive. But do they also have the names of the people in the ERA building in downtown Moscow or Tehran or Pyongyang or Beijing? That, you know, do, don't, can't we get, can't I look at the, the, um, the invisible addresses of that very email, okay, that Attila was showing at the beginning of the show and track it back to where it, from whence it came, from whom it came. And can I do that? Is, it, isn't there technology that would let me identify the individuals and organizations involved? And then I can take much more aggressive steps against them. So it, it, it's, it's interesting. That's an interesting question because, uh, you know, I've asked the same thing, right? Why don't we just hack back? And well, the, the answer to that, and uh, I don't know if it's a viable answer, but it's the United States of America. And, and we need to be, it, we need to be a, you know, a beacon of good of, of what we're doing. We, we need to have the right principles in place. Now, maybe, maybe there's some, ruffles here and there but for the most part you know the united states is not going to do the same type of terrorist activities um, well, i mean defensive though gerhard i mean well, defensive. Defensive, defensive. i want to know the people you know defensive is fine but where do you go from that right so if you're getting attacked you stop the attack you mitigate the attack you ask any cybersecurity professional would you want to hack back sure you want to see where it's going you want to shut them down you don't want them to do it ever again will they stop no so the best you can do is, is um, you know, th is the government here to help? Uh, they're a part of the fabric. I would say if you relied on the government to protect your infrastructure and whatnot, then you're opening up a very big Pandora's box that you don't want to get into. Um, I think you should take the responsibility as, your, as a company owner or as a CEO or as a CISO um, to do every type of due diligence to protect your infrastructure against any type of threat, when, you know, coming down to even just the the basics vulnerability you know vulnerability management asset management configuration management firewall management all these these housekeeping basics you know you get that down and you get that proper and then you'd be surprised how much you know the government now starts to to fade away um if you're relying on the government to protect your assets then it's not uh, the government doesn't move that quick, um, you know. Well, you know, suppose suppose I go back to the beginning. What was his name? Uh, Berners Lee. Berners Lee. Remember him? Uh, to the beginning of the internet, okay. and I say, wait, just like on my phone, you know, when I log in on my computer, we have two step verification, okay. except that I apply that to the whole enchilada, to all of the internet. Attila and I have discussed this before. Go back and, you know, reform the whole thing ab initio from the very beginning and say, if you want to get on the Internet, if you want to use the Internet anyway, you have to have two-step verification. And, you know, it's going to say Gerhard Rickert. That's what it's going to say. And you're going to have to prove up that you are and so forth. <clears throat> okay. And then if you mess around, we know who you are and you will be shut out. Um, and, and, and so the whole Internet is kind of um, a reveal. Uh, it's it's an open book in the sense that we know who's there. Why can't we fix that? Bern would Berners Lee agree uh, to that? Do we have to have all this freedom on the internet? Why can't we have a, a a price of admission in terms of the identification through two step verification, whatever you like, um, to make sure we know who's around? Uh, Attila, you've answered this. You 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 completely d dissolved my question when I asked it last time. Let's see if you can do that again. <laughs> well, you know, one thing about the internet is we have we do have the federal government to uh, thank for that. I mean, that came out of DARPA, is the original ARPANET. And uh, one thing about technology, which is important, is to remember that hindsight is twenty twenty. At the time, we don't know what's going what's going to happen. Right when Bitcoin first came out, it was a joke. Right? Who's laughing now? All the Bitcoin billionaires. Right? Maybe they're not laughing as of recent months, but I'll tell you this, in, in general, uh, things become adopted over time and they become the norm. Uh, that, that, that's from uh, in hundreds of years. You know, we're talking about the history of the automobile, the history of the internet, history of modern medicine. 
uh, you know, even GPS satellites, we forget that's only that technology has only been available to the public for 20 years, right? These are all relatively new things. And internet security is the same. Internet security 20 years ago was different, yep. right? Uh, and, and even I would even argue five years ago was different. Pre-COVID was different. Now we have an entire uh, workforce that, that is now used to working remotely. The technology isn't, isn't new, but it's improved over the past couple of years just because of COVID, right? And because of that, the attack, uh, the attack surface has increased. Uh, we now need to take these things a little bit more seriously. Uh, we have all these great new flexibilities, right? Uh, I, I got to say, you know, even two years ago, I, was it Disney Plus and Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus didn't exist, Paramount Plus didn't exist. We have all these wonderful new innovations that are occurring, um, not just on the uh, consumer side, but on the business side. And everyone, especially if you're doing business with the, with the government in any way, shape or form, you need to really take this seriously because the, the, the internet of a couple of years ago doesn't exist anymore. This is the new, this is the new normal. And if you don't get on board, someone else who does will put you out of business. Okay, he did it again. He completely dissolved my question. I, but you know, but I, I let me ask you, Gerhard, I mean, isn't there something that we can do? Um, you know, I mean, what you know, like for example, Twitter can say, uh, Donald Trump can't come on here. He's he, you know, we're withdrawing his privileges, whatever it is. So why can't why can't there be a, a, a policing mechanism that says if you're if you're going to do a nation state, um, you know, hacking, cyber attacks, uh, we're going to we're going to take away all the IP addresses that you could use. And we have the technology to identify you. You're toast, man. You're toast. Why can't we do that? And is it in your interest? And is it in Attila's interest to come up with that? Because you'd be pulling the rug out from under your own selves wouldn't you <laughs> yeah i mean if you're talking about cybersecurity employment right i don't think there's going to be a shortage of that even if we were to put it in place because technology was meant to be broken and people will find their way around it and they'll get through it over and over and over again so we can start from the very beginning but that's a hypothetical thought right and the fact of the matter is it's the real world right now this is what we're dealing with at this particular time at this particular date and i would love to go back and redo everything you know i would it, windows 95 should go away you know i, I think it, <laughs> but you know it's uh it 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 there's nothing that we can do to change the past all we can do right now is is really work hard to fortify the future and, and, you know, keep as much security and integrity within the companies and the government as possible. And so what, what is the future in terms of, um, you know, the, the technology of dealing with this, um, you know, this, this, this bad technology, the technology of stopping it or at least limiting it um, and, you know, dealing with the, the bad guys. Uh, I mean, and, you know, you say, well, okay, we're going to train these people to look for suspicious emails. That's that's not at a high level of technology. That's no, at a, a low level of technology. We're, we're getting way we're we're getting way past that, right? I mean, yeah. you're looking at AI, you know, artificial intelligence, deep machine learning, and whatnot, and getting that involved into the cybersecurity realm. Um, you you talk about putting me out of work. Yeah, the AI will put me out of work. You know, <laughs> and I'm not worried about. I'm not. There'll always be humans messing up, right? I'll always be worried. <laughs> but, uh, the moment you get artificial intelligence involved then then you know cybersecurity starts to to look really really uh dim for the practitioner but again you know it's that that's you listen to a bunch of different people on artificial intelligence i particularly like uh, michio kaku on his ideas on artificial intelligence so i don't think we'll be seeing any type of uh loss of jobs in the industry for the next maybe 60, 70 years. Um, as as, as technology right. advances, it's, it's, so does the security. So does the, um, you know, the, the, different, the different types of technology advances we move into at, at pre-COVID. You know, pre-COVID was more on the industry, more on the company, more on the data center, more on the hot, hot, the hot, 
uh, cold type data centers and, and disaster recovery and everything else. And then COVID hit. And now all of a sudden, the I hate this term new norm, but the norm is you know, everybody's remote. Everybody's working remote. And uh, technology had to balance itself out to accommodate that. And that opened up a lot of different you know, vulnerabilities, a lot of different things that people weren't looking at before. And they had to focus on it. Yeah. And worry about it. I mean, clearly we're in another time. Maybe COVID, you know, some, somehow uh, um, accelerated that time. But here we are, and it's just another thing to worry about when you get up in the morning. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's why I think about uh, the margaritas. Um, so, so, Gerhard, you're closing. Your closing advice to people, and then Attila will have his his closing advice to them. Um, get the basics down. If you're if you're a business owner, get get the basics down. Get get your housekeeping in order. Um, if you if you need a a security professional, you know, get yourself a VC. So if you're a small medium company, it's a fractional CISO. We provide the service if you need. Um, and get the basics down. You'd be surprised how much you can button up in your company with the basics squared away. And then we can talk about the 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 you know the cream on the coffee and all that you know at a later point of view so i think that would be my biggest advice understand what your business is doing it doing and get the basics down okay Attila, you you started this conversation Let, let's see if you can provide some closing remarks on it yeah absolutely i mean the the basics uh that the guard mentions that's that's a great place to start and uh you know you know, be be uh, be kind to yourself. Uh, you know, many of the organizations we we all come in contact with, no, no one's perfect, right? You know, uh, back in the day, I remember in ThinkTech, we used to we used to meet in person. Now we have to do this imperfect Zoom thing. I mean, that you know that it's it's all it's all a uh, it, we're all just kind of doing best effort here on, on some of this stuff. But uh, when it comes right down to it, every organization that that we work with uh, that, that 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 exists, we all solve problems, right? So the bigger your problem that you're solving, the more at risk you are. If that problem is, uh, you know, federal uh, federal work, that's a big problem that has that has a lot of uh, responsibility behind it. Uh, you you got to do the basics and and more and uh, keep up with the trends, uh, right? This is not a one time thing. This isn't uh, you know you, you don't take a shower just once and then you're finished, right? You take a shower more often. You brush your teeth more often. Cyber hygiene is a very real part of that. And uh, it's going to be up to your organization to make sure that you keep up with it. And uh, sometimes you don't have the time. Hey, guys, I don't have the time to change the oil on my car anymore. You probably don't have the time to change your, uh, it, you know, to change your technology and keep it up to date. Hire a well, you know, you know, the thing is, uh, what, I, what I take from this is that, um, and, and this goes for our, our country and our society, it's everybody's job. At the yeah. end of the day, we're talking about national security. I mean, both on the economic level and on the security, you know, level. And um, you can't just pop it off to someone else. We're all part of it. We all have to take steps. We all have to be conscious. We all have to um, be part of the solution. Anyway, thank you, Attila. I'll tell you, Ceres and, uh, and Ger Gerhard, um, did I get this right? Gerhard Rickert, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a great discussion. I learned a lot, and I appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. And by the way, next time we're going to get we're going to get uh, into the cream and the coffee. That was a very oblique reference, Gerhard. We're not going to let you go on that. We have to understand what's in the cream. Like maybe they have chips in the cream. I'm only kidding. All right. We'll talk soon. Aloha. <laughs> Stay safe. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com.
Mahalo.